Good to go. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Scottsburg, Indiana Board of Public Works and Safety. This is April 26th, the year of our Lord, 2021. I uh, will call our meeting to order uh, and we'll have the roll call first by our clerk treasurer. Mayor Amick. Here. Tom Lewis. Here. Karen Gracious. Here. The next thing on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the April the 12th meeting. We will entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented unless you have seen a, uh, an error or you need an addition. I'll so move. Tom Lewis moves to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? I second. Questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. The next thing we have is a call for a public hearing at the 515 Unsafe Building. It's located at 608 Hadger Street in Scottsburg, Indiana. The current time right now is 518. So we are now declaring our public hearing open. And Council, we are going to call. Uh, do we call Ms. Bernard? Yes, if she is present and wish to present anything, this would be her opportunity. Ms. Bernard, Ms. Bernard, Ms. Bernard. 43 times. You see anybody outside the, in the foyer? I do not follow it, though. Thank you. No, sir. Okay. At this point, uh, Council, do we we close the public close the public meeting? meeting? Okay, with no person to represent, we will close the public meeting regarding the 608 Hadley Street property. So that meeting is closed. Um, we were going to have other residents here too. They may think that it, this is 530. Okay. So, uh, go on. The through. notice to her said 515. 515, okay. So that is what is it, because she is the one that has the right to the hearing, not um, anyone else. So the background on this situation is this is a property at 608 Hazard. Um, the Julie Bernard is the owner. Uh, we had two lien holders that we auto also noticed at today's hearing. Um, Julie was served in person by Chief Zellers. Um, the home does not have any utilities last I heard and still does not have any utilities. The health department, um, the county health department has um, quote unquote condemned it. They've taken their initial steps and asked that the property be vacated. Um, it wasn't. Um, no utilities were on still, so we issued um, an, an order to have it immediately vacated. Uh, we also entered a second um, order, um, order notice by uh, Michelle Kazai, our safety officer, to abate several of the issues with that property. And I'll defer to Michelle to kind of categorize those. It's my understanding from Chief Zellers. Um, I don't know what Steve's fancy rank is. Steve Harold, uh, his fancy rank at the police department, he's been in there personally. Uh, Commissioner Mike Jones, I know, has been there. All of them, just, it's, it's, there's a lot of used needles. It's a very um, unsafe inside anytime they've been called there for some public safety issues. And that is why we're bringing this matter uh, before you for action. So as the Board of Pur Public Works under our unsafe building ordinance, you are the hearing body. So Michelle issues um, the orders and then you decide whether to amend those orders, continue those orders, or to rescind those orders. So at this point in time, I would defer to Michelle as far as any updates, any changes, um, and then exactly what the status of the property is. Um, there hasn't been any changes as far as, you know, anyone going in, everything looks the same, uh, anybody cleaning anything, you know, putting a bunch of trash out front, anything like that. Um, the notice that we put on the door is still there. Um, now it's in a condition where they need to mow. Uh, they're not, you know, and I don't know if she is staying there. You know, we basically told her that, you know, 
that she didn't couldn't or whatever, but I think she's still been staying there. Um, so uh, nothing has changed on the property as far as so no improvements, no effort to no, no comply effort. with our mm -hmm. order has happened. No. So it, the unsafe building um, law is a state law that we've adopted as a city. So it gives us pretty um, strong enforcement authority over unsafe properties. Um, we have to give notice that's now. This, this is her opportunity to be present and um, present a defense if, if she had one to present. Um, if you affirm the order that has been issued, then that gets recorded. So if she wants to try to sell the property or something like that, it would be public notice that there is enforcement activity. Um, she has, by the orders that were issued, she cannot remove or come back into the property, reside there, until she gets the utilities um, back on. And then the second issue with it being unsafe is the uh, trash and the issue we mentioned um, being a fire hazard, hazard to public health, a public nuisance, um, and dangerous to a personal property. Um, we've ordered that she fix those issues, repair, rehabilitate the safe, the, surf, the unsafe building, and remove those items. Um, under the order that was issued, um, she had 30 days to complete that action. So that would have been 30 days beginning uh, with March 31st. So we're getting near the time where she doesn't appear she's going to take any action. Uh, once you approve the continuous enforcement order, we would record that and then the city would be able to um, proceed with taking uh, remediation efforts. The unsafe building, why it's uh, such an effective tool as a lot of cities and counties use across the state, is we get to lean for our costs. So if we do have to go in and clean up the yard or uh, make the property safe, we can then lean that against the tax bill and that's due just as property taxes are due. So at some point, maybe a little bit down the road, we're more than likely going to be um, made whole with our um, cleanup expense in the property. So all that said, what you have to decide tonight is whether to proceed on with the orders um, as issued, um, amend them, or rescind them. I also want to bring to, to this Board of Works attention as well is that Though there, an order has been given by the circuit court that she cannot reside there, she's continuing to reside there. Well, no, this order is from us. Oh, it's from us. Yes, from the city. So uh, she is continuing to reside there. Uh, her transportation mode is being hidden by the neighbors talking. I've asked uh, Miss Michelle to buy there, and she hasn't seen it. And the neighbors say she hasn't seen it because she's hiding her vehicle in it's a three wheel bike. And uh, also, the amount of complaints that the mayor's office has received due to odor complaints. And we had several residents who had planned to be here this evening that, uh, uh, so if they come in, they can probably speak for themselves. But uh, uh, we've had, um, I would imagine, a half a dozen uh, contacts. Uh, when it gets warm, the odor is, is, is hard to bear. As a matter of fact, there was an elderly lady in her 80s that had to be removed by her child due to the odor, and uh, you know, and that's a right next, it's a right next door, neighbor to this lady. So uh, this is why this has been so deemed such an inhabitable, because I want, I want uh, Miss Leslie Bixler. See, Bink's not here. I don't get that mixed up. Now. <laughs> and uh, to confirm that no water has been turned on or utilities. Is that correct? That is correct. <clears throat> I just want that for the record to state that this has been ongoing since probably what last August, September, something of that nature. September, the utilities were shut off the first time. Of when? September. September. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, uh, and Scottsford PD was in there, and it was exactly as uh, council has has said um, it is a extraneous place to go into Sabrina. so I, I painted to karen that would be a continuous enforcement order approving both of the orders if you would want to take action to do so we would need motion second to vote and then signature on those 
the orders that I was speaking of was attached to the email that Jill had sent out on Friday, I believe. So we have a motion to go so forward. So what is the, what is the, uh, okay. Does the owner live in that house? Uh, yes. Not yes. supposed to anymore. She does. Is it a she? Is it a she? Yes. Is it a she? Yes. Uh, anyway, my, my question is, we take action and clean it up, turn on the utilities. What happens then? To leave the property, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we necessarily turn on the utilities. I don't know that, that that's not necessarily our caretaking function, but the removal of the unsafe matter that's at or near the residence. Um, but she still can't live in that, right? Our order as issued, which you would be affirming if you signed, if you took action, she is not to reside there until she. Here's the issue of the unsafe, which is the emergency unsafe part, which is the utilities. So essentially, Indiana law to live in, for something to be habitable, okay. these utilities. Okay, supposing we continue the order, we go in and clean it up. She still can't live there. Until she gets the utilities on. Is what if she doesn't do that? It just continues and continues. What happens then? So we can take court action and let the court... Um, as the mayor said, right now, from what I'm hearing, we don't have first-hand knowledge that she's still living there. So, I mean, if that becomes evident, and we, we have first-hand knowledge of that, um, following the petition of the court, asking the court to basically take notice of our order and to issue a, a removal order. Pretty significant action. I mean, we're basically doing a foreclosure, but we're not lean hold at that point in time. Um, I don't know what the court would do with that, frankly. Um, if we were to clean it up and get the lien against the property at some point in time, we could foreclose that lien and we would be in position to ask for removal. I have two of the residents here, probably the six that has contacted the mayor's office regarding this property, and I want them to testify as well to this board as to what's going on, but I also want to tell you what has happened in the past as well. Uh, our street foreman uh, department head was there with me. This would have been last fall, probably. And uh, when this kind of came to a head to begin with, and um, at that point, there was an outstanding warrant. Uh, this, this home was owned by the mother. When she died, it was willed to the daughter. And that's who, what this cause is against. And the daughter then has a daughter. So the owner's granddaughter is there. And then she has a boyfriend who's there. And there's been a lot of uh, uh, use there, misuse of, of uh, narcotics. And, uh, and so uh, the man was arrested and, uh, and the lady came out, uh, Miss Menard. And I said, Miss Menard, uh, and she, she was crying, sir, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I said, I understand that. And I said, but you, you can't live this way. We have ordinances and we have to abide by the ordinances. So she was told very plainly, I said, if, you're, if you don't have the money to clean this place up, the city will buy this from you. We will buy this and we will put you in a place that, like a Craig Park. We want you to know. That way, your daughter and son can't live with you, you know. And she said, I begged them, I begged them to clean this up. I said, you shouldn't have to beg anybody, you know. So uh, this is yours to handle. And she said, I just can't do it. I said, okay, can't means won't. And, uh, you know. So it's gone to a place mm -hmm. where, again, the last degree that had uh, the daughter has now been sent off to prison. The other boy has been, was incarcerated. He made bail and then was rearrested. She was arrested as well. And she is out now as well. So this is the background of this. Now we have two residents here. Uh, both live basically next door. One is via his mother. Uh, and Ed probably lives just a block away. So I would like to have this board hear your testimony as well, guys. Yeah, yeah. What, what's happening is I grew up with this lady. You know, my mother's property adjoins hers. For over a year, they've been dumping feces and urine on the ground. And they have no facilities, obviously. Uh, the police have been over there countless times. You can ask them. Uh, if you don't know about this residence, you should have known about it before now. I contacted the health department, quoted them the ordinances, the state statutes. Uh, it's just a mess. The people, my mother's property adjoins it. 
Um, the people that live right next door to her have two, three-year-old children that they can't even let out in their yard. Number one, because of the stench. And number two, because they're afraid. They're scared of their neighbors. And so either, I, I don't know what the board works, and apparently we got in here a little late, but I can tell you what's going to happen on my end. If the city doesn't do something, I have some very good friends at WDRB and WHAS, and I've already talked to them. And I'm going to be standing out in the middle of the street, and I'm going to, I'm going to show them where they dump the feces, where they dig a hole sometimes and bury them. And I'm going to say that I've written letters to all the, and I have, I wrote, I wrote Terry a letter, health department a letter. And I'm going, to, I'm going to say, I can't get anything done. And this is what's happening. This neighborhood, <clears throat> Mrs. Jones, Jim Barnes, Mary Sue Huff, my mother, who if you'd like to come over at my mother's every morning at 7.30 when I take her coffee and sit there and watch her cry for 45 minutes because the smell is so bad that she can't stand it. So I'm just letting, putting, and Terry's been cooperative. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just putting everybody on notice. I'm done. Short with a can of gas and <laughs> a match. I'm done. So my next step, I have videos. I have pictures. My next step is to go to social media, which I'm going to do if I have to. And then I'm going to be on TV. And I'm going to be on TV a lot because they have a big interest in this story that somebody has been dumping feces on the ground for over a year within corporate city limits. So, I'm here, what I'm here tonight, and I think what Jim Barnes is here for, is to find out what is the next step, or what is the step, so that I can go back and tell my mother, I can go back and tell Mary Sue Huff, and Mrs. Jones, who's afraid to come out of her house because she's 87 years old, She's afraid to walk out into her driveway and pay the person who mows her yard. So I'm done. And I've been pretty <coughs> nice about it, actually. You know, I wanted to rip somebody's head off. But I'm just done with it now. You know, it's affecting my mother's health. We've called the fire department's been there twice. The police department's been there. Fire department's got this sophisticated piece of equipment that sniffs out smells, and guess where they went? That backyard. Uh, so that's why I'm here, and I'm hoping to hear something from somebody, and she is living there. Jim Barnes and I see her every day. She rides a three-wheeled bicycle about a mile and a half an hour, so it's not hard to catch her. Uh, we know where she works. She works for the former assistant chief of police. Um, so <laughs> she is living there. And there, there isn't any question about that. So I just, I'd like to know what the next step is, what has to be taken. If I need to do something, I'll do it. So I don't know if James got anything to say. I mean, Thank you. I want, to, I want Jim to speak, but I want to say something as well regarding where Ed's concerned. While his mother is basically, this house is just to the east of her, just to the south of her was another home that we had a problem with, which was the Gene Rogers home. And again, this was a whole other thing. We had, you know, we had to send, um, you know, our, again, street uh, department superintendent to go out and probably pick up 300 bags of trash piled up. And it, it too was a, just a horrid mess. And again, we've been contacted. That bank is repossessing that property. We've got permission from them to secure that property for them. We, had, we were able to go and put new locks on that, put no trespassing signs up, and that has stopped all of that, that illegal activity there. So in, in Ed's mother's case, she's had it not only to the east of her next door, but also to the south of her. So it's been kind of a, uh, Double conundrum there for her. So, uh, uh, Jim, uh, 
Well, the only thing I got to see is I live there next door to Julie's parents. They were great people. They were good to me when I first moved in. They kept their house, everything was A number one. Over the years, it is, as they have passed away and it passed down, it's deteriorated. And I don't know, this young lady over here could tell us how, many, how long they haven't had a sewer, a working sewer. That'd be enough to get them out. I mean, I would think so. Uh, if not, we'll all get off the sewer system and throw it in the yard. Come on. There's got to be an ordinance somewhere. I, I, if not, there should be. I mean, if you hadn't got a working sewer, how can you live? How, how do you live like that? And I'm next door to it. I tried my best to keep my property up for, for 50 some years. And I couldn't get what I gave for it right now. Nobody would buy my place. And it's not fair to be punished trying to do good by having something like that. And I know you can't legislate good behavior or common sense, but uh, we need some, I need some help. The neighborhood needs some help. And it's up to, and that's why we elected you folks. You are our leaders. We look up to you all. We just, you all need to make some decisions. Help us out. Now, to bring you up to date, because this began at 5.15, because we normally start at 5.30, but we began at 5.15 a little bit earlier for Ms. Bernard to be here as well and, and be able to tell us her plight, but she was not here. So what's before this board now is to approve a continuance of an enforcement order. Now, my understanding is if she is continuing to reside there, that yes, she's there now. legal counsel can... Uh, well, we could seek an action. So I guess to back up, so there has been an order issued to her um, over a month, right about a month ago, to vacate the premises, fix the premises, do several things. Um, ask private citizens, any neighbors, any property owners there, you have the ability under any nuisance law to file, to file a suit against her. We have to file, we have to provide due process. We do not get the same chances that uh, a private entity would as far as the timeliness of the quickness and abating something like this. Um, so we have issued those orders tonight. We affirm those, we send them, or uh, modify them. That, that's, that's what's before this board tonight. Uh, she's narrated her timeline to have that have things corrected. She is not supposed to reside at the residence until she has utilities. Here's our problem. We're, we are the city government. We're, we're not, um, we don't have the ability to, we, there is no mortgage on the property. We can't kick someone out of their own house um, beyond the, the help of the order without the assistance of um, the court. And whether or not the court would order something or not, that's, that, that's I, I can't speculate on that's not me making the decision. But that is where the next step for that um, would go. So, but I do want to be clear, as far as a nuisance action, that as a private claim of action is, the neighborhood would have that ability to seek. So there are there are some other venues, I guess. If you, I mean, I, I feel at this time the unsafe building under state law is by far is, is, has the most teeth, and that's what we are proceeding under now. So the, so explain to me what the next step is to be taken for tonight for this board to either. Modify, rescind, or affirm the order that was issued, the two orders that were issued to her on April 30th, or on uh, March 31st. Uh, there was one order issued finding that the property it is not a state for habitation, she needs to vacate. So that was issued to her. The second order was finding all of the other issues that are with the property that needed to be abated. Uh, it's minor saying from the pictures or trash. Or, needles, things of that nature, that needs to be done. So assuming that this board takes action, that, that if we affirm that action tonight, that gets recorded,
and we can proceed on there bidding for the work and having the work done if she doesn't complete it within her statutory time. The one issue that we're going to have is Indiana law allows us to issue an emergency order requiring someone to vacate. It doesn't say in that next statute, because you know, as an attorney, I'd really like it for a legislature, the next statute says, but if they don't move out, here's what you can do. Guess what? Don't say that. So I mean, that's the rub for us is that next step's gonna have to come from a judge. It doesn't come in the statute as to what we can take to do. So assuming that from what you're saying, she's still living there, yeah. um, she's not gonna turn the utilities on until there's further action. So um, I mean, if the board would want to entertain a motion and give me the authority to, if you affirm the order to also initiate a suit to, if we can get our order enforced, require her to vacate. Will she now be in contempt of court as well? She's not in contempt of court yet because it's not a court order, it's our order. Okay. She's in contempt of our order, but we do not have contempt of court power. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's what we're asking for, though, is from the court, basically the court to find that our order is issued valid in every law, which it was, that she's had notice, that she did not appear, she's still residing there, and it's unsafe, require her to leave. And then if she violates that court order, she is in contempt of court, which would be a jailable offense. So, just make sure I'm clear. I think I am, but we have approved this, affirming this. She's got till the 31st. Then we go in and clean it up. We can't change her locks at that point to keep her out, right? No. Okay. I'm not comfortable doing that. The law does not allow us to do that. Okay. So, That's without a court order. Right, but I just want to make sure. But once you have a court order, then we can't. That, that the court allows it, absolutely. So, in the, in the, idea of moving forward on an expeditious path, I suggest we affirm this and then take a second vote to authorize Josh to um, file whatever you said, file a claim with the court. Or file the Initiate litigation. <laughs> can we can we make the affirmation contain that the that the, the to go for to proceed with the continuance of the enforcement order uh, for the record, I would want a motion to approve the continuous enforcement order at, as presented. Okay. That, that affirms those orders. We record that, and then she's still on the clock. We'll have to talk. One of the issues here is cleanup. And, you know, I, I've seen some pictures. I do know what's in there. I, I don't think the city has anyone on staff that should be cleaning this up. So we're going. We're talking probably a pretty expensive professional outfit to clean the needles and biohazard. biohazard situation. So that's something we're going to have to pull it out because that's not going to be probably cheap. But so that's there's a process there as well. So the law side getting initiated litigation though is by far the quickest route to try to get an order from the judge telling her to vacate. Yeah. So we have a motion to approve I'm motion that we approve this uh, affirm this uh, continued continuous enforcement order. Okay, Tom Lewis makes the motion. Is there a second? That's good. Motions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's a five, it's a five to nothing vote. <laughs> and now I make a motion to authorize Josh to proceed with the pursuing legal action to the effect that he just started. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> What's the verbiage on that, Josh? Initiate litigation to have the property vacated. <clears throat> How long will that take to come before the court? Don't control the court's calendar. So, <laughs> can you do that prior <laughs> to the thirty-first, or you have to wait? I time? yes. I mean, I, I would proceed on with that. I mean, that's something I I could get filed this week. Is there any type of emergency order that can be put in? That's up to the judge. I mean, I, I can request a whole bunch of stuff, but <laughs> we, we'll, we'll see what we get issued. But um, yes, I mean, as far as um, I, I would suspect that that's something that he would want to have, um, the court would want to have a hearing on, um, at least give an opportunity for notice. We have to have service before we can, the court can take any action. Um, she's in the home, we know where she works, we should be able to get her served fairly easily. Um, but. I would suspect the court would want to set a fairly quick hearing and have a hearing before issuing any orders. Um, 
That continuous enforcement order, Jay, we need that report. And you need to sign it. Yeah. You can get that report and get that back to me. And just FYI, part of what we're trying to do here is clean up all this gospel. And, and, uh, and not only the houses that look trashy, but also illegal activity going on. Because that's, that's all the cleanup process. And your mom's house, your house is all going to give them value in this thing cleaned up. So we feel it's, that has been a top priority. So I'm sorry this has taken so long. We've been trying to get everything in place so that this can be take a quicker avenue. So we've pretty well got it in place now. So thank you for your Did you patience. second that motion? No, not yet. Yeah. We have a motion before us then for, to go forward with legal litigation uh, to, re to remove the occupant and uh, this property. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Any questions, comments, concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Well, thank you all very much. It's, 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 it's an untenable situation. It's, it's horrible. And I, I know it's not easy to have someone move from the residence. It's not even something that I want to do, but I don't know what the answer is. It sounds like we're being put in for so, it. It's like there's always consequences for actions, and this is the consequence for the actions she's taking. So as much as we feel sorry for her, we do. So so the only thing that, that I'll, we'll, we'll get out of here, because we don't need to be in the board of work, so I should think we some really assistance oh, here. <laughs> but if you would just keep me apprised of when we file the order and, and, and when it's been issued, when I'm sure it will be. And, and uh, we, we want to get there and clean things up. Yeah, we want you to. to. Exactly. Immediately. You know, so. But as soon as we get the green light, we'll, we'll take action. I'll probably use Michelle. You, I, yeah. I'll probably use her to communicate because if we do get set for a period, having a neighbor or someone for the judge to lay eyes on to see us through the issue and to confirm that she is still staying there. Because that's one of the issues from the city standpoint. Mm -hmm. You guys know that one for sure. That we don't. And, and I think Jim and, and Eddie's mother can both validate that she is still there. So I think the court might need to know that. Yeah. So. We can do it. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank Good you, guys. Night. Thank you. She's there. Now, if that, she's not supposed to be, right? She right. is not supposed to be by our, by our current order. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but she was served yeah. with that order, and it's posted on the front door. But she moves it, goes in, and closes the door. Jim, if you could ever get a picture going in the door for the court, we'd sell it. I'm not taking a picture of her. There you go. <laughs> I'm in enough trouble around town. <laughs> Thank you very much. You don't know, have to add to this. There is a house on Meridian Street. It's 107. 104. No, 140. 140. 140. 140. Mm -hmm. We, oh. we are, that's another one. Yeah, it's we, our dirty dozen list. We and have uh, several properties in the list of one landlord, uh, Larry Haven, and uh, we're going to either have to meet with him or something because they're not being mowed, they're, it's garbage all over the place. I mean, you know, so I reached out to him, sent letters, left messages, and I'm not getting anywhere. So. This is another one of those same instances. So this is a process. So this is the, the unsafe building is something that I anticipate us using um, quite frequently in the for in the future. One of the issues with why um, with the pandemic we were not able to meet in person there for a, a substantial period of time. Um, providing someone an opportunity to be heard was is one of the issues with some of this enforcement. So we do have a, a list. We wanted to get feet wet on getting through the whole process on one. This has been the one that needs the most attention. And then I think the next time we'll be here, we'll have three or four. Most of the time, it's not similar. It's not as bad as this. Mm -hmm. That's a fair way to say it. This has been the top one for a while. We have a dirty dozen of us. 
Yes, 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 yes. But good is another place. There's the red cars are not far from them. And and we've been in contact with Greg and uh, Anthony both, and they're actually uh, going to take action with that. They're before oh. the city now to yeah. borrow money to be able to tear the buildings down, build brand new buildings, and remove all of that product. Oh. So that's going forward as well. We have ground laws and everything. Just yeah. Scott. Yes. So, and that's part. Well, and that's really, I mean, I don't know where I'm going to be, but um, are we going to try to pursue businesses now? We'll yeah. talk about this. Oh, okay. We are, you know, last year we concentrated on residential. This year we're doing residential and businesses. Okay. So, so uh, okay. We'll go down to the department heads real quick. We have probably another 20 minutes here. Several things to get through. Uh, the approve the job descriptions we have before you tonight. There's been a change in our folks in the mayor's office. You know, I've always been a guy to multitask and have had folks multitasking with me. And, uh, and things have, have uh, have all kind of been convoluted, as it were. And things are just popping right now. You know, Scottsburg, you know, my whole goal what econ economically was to emphasize housing. If you could start that snowball of housing and it kept starts rolling down the, the, the hill, corporations will notice population movement. Once they notice population movement, guess what? You're going to have more corporate entities coming to your town, be it eateries, be it con consumer, uh, goods, uh, you're going to have so much more. With that then, the last entity to come in is going to be industry. Okay, So we want you to know it begins with, with housing. And that's what we're doing now. We, my economic development is housing, but it's also, it's also retail. It's also eateries. It is also uh, industry. We want as much as we can. We want to grow Scottsburg in a, in a competent, complete way. And uh, you know, so that's why we are uh, we're getting a comprehensive plan going uh, for now and for 20 years in the future. So, uh, uh, but with that said, uh, going back to the job descriptions, the the re the the retail of single-family homes has become so and multi-housing as well. Ashley has moved into the full-time area plan commission director. Okay, that then left. Jessica, who's been overloaded, to be, be our HR gal, our assistant safety director. Also, she's in charge of the Mid America Science Park as well. What else do we have on you? ADA, ADA coordinator, and then I was doing the mayor's assistant as well. So we're trying to do a cleanup and definition of jobs and help split some of that away. And that's, we're trying to be more definitive in the job descriptions. Jill, comes to us from the county as uh, in a supervisory position she was in uh, in, their, in their highway department. So she comes with a vast knowledge of uh, grants and how to get those grants and, and make things happen. So she's basically become my right hand, which has taken a load off of off Miss Jones and uh, in Miss Campbell. And uh, so that's kind of what this is about. So. Uh, I would like to <laughs> see if, if this board will approve Jill Baker as the mayor's assistant. We need to start by approving the job descriptions first. Okay. Well, so this is a multi-tier. We got five tiers on this one. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to go two here. Yes. Uh, approve the job descriptions of Jill Baker. If you've had a chance to look at the job descriptions in your packet of uh, human resources for Jessica and also the administrative assistant for Miss Jill. I make a motion. Okay, Karen makes the motion. Is there a second? I have a second. Okay, questions, comments, concerns? Very good. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Now let's go to the personnel changes. And this is where the rest of that comes in, too. So, with what he just said, this goes along with all of that and it goes hand in hand. The first one is just more of an update for you guys, and that is that Ashley will be moving from the mayor's office payroll 
to 100% on the advisory plan commission payroll as their, their executive director. That does not have to have anything with you guys because of the fact that their, uh, their board has already approved all of that. But that's just to let you know that she will be coming off of the mayor's office payroll and going over that way. The second one, both the second and the third one need to be, if you make the motion to approve, they are approved contingent upon the council approving the salary ordinance amendment this evening. And they're effective yesterday's date so that we can be at the beginning of the pay, pay period. And that would be, to, as the mayor was saying, to move Jill from the mayor's field administrator to the mayor's administrative assistant position and to move myself from the mayor's administrative assistant position to the human resource assistant safety director ADA coordinator position. And, then, and I will still be doing the science part as well. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a parking and character, right? <laughs> so, uh, basically, at the end of the day, this is about where Ash is going with her full time, where she's needed, and that, that area plan will be paying. She's no longer being paid for mayors. And this, because my municipality goes to these kind of things. So, we'll accept a, a motion to, uh, to make the personnel changes as presented. I'll so move. Tom Lewis makes that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Karen will second. Any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing that, all in favor say aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Next thing is to ratify the phone bill we had on the CARE to the CARES Act. That's me. That's you. Yes. Um, I notified you all on April 13th, uh, talked to uh, the mayor at 225, Karen at 234, and Tom at 337 uh, on April 13th because that's when I called and told y'all about Indiana Bottle had put a hold and we needed to pay the application two of two in the amount of $25,000 a weekly group. And I had three yeses, and we just need a motion to ratify that vote. I have a motion to ratify that. Tom Lewis makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Karen Bridge has seconds. Questions, comments, concerns? Very good. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous there. Let's go down to old business just a second. Indiana Bottle had, it had uh, a plant they were selling down in South that uh, it did, the sale didn't go through. That's why they kind of hesitated a bit. But they come back since then and said, yes, we definitely want to go forward with this. So they are going forward with this uh, half million dollar loan that we have to loan out. And that's all going forward now. So uh, just to let you know that that's all good news. Uh, again, another 30,000 square foot addition, another dozen employees, I believe it is, something like that. So all very positive. Down to new business, professional service agreement for covid Phase three, small business grant by Jill Sigis. We are going to put Jill on the phone here. And she wants to explain some things to you. Hey, Jill. Hi, Jill. How are you? Good. Good. I've got you on speaker here with everyone. You can go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, thank you for accommodating me. Um, I do actually get out of my quarantine tomorrow. So, um, Anyway, um, I uh, have presented and I feel that Josh has reviewed it and has blessed it uh, in agreement with the weekly group in the city of Scottsburg to manage the uh, city's COVID phase three grant that was received, uh, awarded on April 19th uh, for $250,000. And uh, he should be getting, the city should be getting an award letter. I got an email this morning from Oprah saying that those will be out in the next um, in the next week or so, that they will send out an official award letter and grant agreement. And if uh, the agreement is similar, uh, with the exception of dates uh, and the uh, reference to phase three, as the uh, phase two agreement that he has to with us last year. Thank you, Jill. This, this agreement, just for the, so the board knows, is similar to the one we had earlier. So this will go to folks who have been negatively affected by the COVID-19. And again, the last one was 250000 This is another joke. So the state's been able to give Scott County or Scottsburg half a million dollars to give out to businesses here that are, it has been in dire need. So, uh, you know, so before we would entertain then a motion to go forward with the professional agreement for COVID phase three. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you. Tom Lewis makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Karen Grisha seconds. Questions, comments, concerns? Anything for Jill? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Ms. Thank you so much. Ms. Jill, thank you so very much. Have a good evening. You too. See you in a little bit. Bye. All right. Bye bye. The next thing we have is the well abandonment contract and addendum. This goes back, I don't think I'm old enough. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> to, to the way, I was going to say, to when I was a wee little boy, but it goes back a long ways. This is Scott Manufacturing. Scott Manufacturing is on Elm Street, right across from the armory there, as it were. And, and somehow, Scottsburg got involved. I'm not going to go through the history, history of it, but Board Warner, I think, bought the property or something. Jan probably knows more about this. And Scottsburg got involved, but I know when I came in, Carrie told me that this was giving going on as a brownfield. They did a phase one, they found it positive. And so it had to go into multiple, with the mobile wells, I think 26 plus wells had to be tested. They had to test live wells in people's homes that they're not even using anymore, but they had a well early on, uh, back in the 1800s or whatever. And we are at the end of this. We are now abandoning the wells. To have a, a well abandoned, you have to hire a state certified well driller who also has a certificate to be able to close wells. And they literally go in there and close that well. They use a type of material that Tom's going to know about, and it expands and makes that well totally closed. So uh, there was an agreement here before us uh, that with a local company, a local company. The total amount of that is $11,600 to be able to close all the 26 wells, and we will be done with this. And uh, hallelujah. And Jan will not be giving me any more invoices every month or every quarter, whatever it is, for the past, uh, you know, at least eleven thousand dollars to close twenty six. Eleven thousand six hundred dollars. Yes. Twenty six dollars. Twenty six dollars. Cheap. It is. So it's, it's a very reasonable price. Yeah. So. Uh, so. Need a motion to. We'll need a motion to basically uh, go forward with the. Well, abandonment contract and addendum. Kerry, I sent it over to Kerry. I also sent this to Jacob Price, who is the IDM inspector in all this. And I said, Jacob, I want your blessing that what if we approve this, that IDM says, okay, that's it. They actually will take this to the governor, said the Scottsburgers has um, done everything over all these years. Here's all the data we have. And then he signs a release stating that the state will not litigate against Scottsburg. That's that's all it was. So, so Tom makes the motion for the well abandonment contract. Is there a second? I'll second. Karen Grisha seconds as contract and addendum. Any questions, comments, concerns? Bring that all. Ever say aye? Aye. Aye. Uh, total. Next is the approval of the park deeds. I will defer to Jill or. I'll take this one. This okay. is a yes. really, really fun. Let's go for it. So this has been a fun evening, man. Anyway, uh, DNR reached out at some point to Parks Department. Uh, we got a grant in ninety. Twenty uh, some thirty time, years, 30 years, years ago, yeah. and uh, someone in Indy had some free time, apparently. <laughs> and uh, at that point in time, we got this grant. A part of the grant paperwork was we would add this paragraph into our deeds of Lake Iowa and Beachwood Park. Well, that didn't happen. Well, she wanted to know if it happened. Well, it had happened, so we had to make it happen. Um, putting back together those legal descriptions was some work. Uh, the Scott County photographer, uh, Larry Blevins, was a big assistant in that and helped me out a lot there. Because some of these deeds dated back into the early 1920s. Um, we got that done. I got a draft each sent up. She has approved, the DNR has approved them. Uh, we just need this board's approval for the mayor and then uh, Jan to certify those. We can get them recorded, send back to her, and then someone up there can close their file and we can be a part of that. Okay. So we need a motion to approve approval of the park deeds. Approve the deeds, authorize you to sign. And, and the deeds, we're deeding them back to the current owner with that paragraph and the 
that's all we're doing. We're not deeding anything away or anything like that. We're just deeding back to ourselves with that correct language. Okay. I make the motion. Karen Grishas makes the motion to approve the park deeds. And Tom will second. Questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Stigman, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Get out. Thank you. will need to be recorded also. Recorded. Please get to me so I can email her back. Hey, yes, I can tell you. Be Wednesday. This is one of those problems that if it took her 30 years to reach out to us, I thought I could take a little time on it. But she kept emailing a lot. So. She, was, she was persistent, I will say, yes. And we passed that trash to you pretty quickly. I had needs to get out. Yeah. The next thing on our agenda is the interlocal agreement to sell two used cars to the county. Those used cars are Scottsford PD patrol cars. They were both Chrysler <coughs> Challengers, Chargers, I think it's Chargers. Chargers two door, two doors, two, and you know, the Challengers four doors. So two Chargers. Uh, those are being sold in for $7,500, uh, which is a great deal for a per. A, a piece, yes. So fifteen thousand dollars total, which is a deal and a half for the county, uh, because it going down to the next one, I'm going to ask more money for that. So, um, uh, but we want to help the county. So, uh, we have a motion to go forward with the interlocal <coughs> agreement to sell two used Scottsford PD cars. I like the motion. Richards makes the motion. Tom will second. Any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Now the next thing is permission to sell the third car. We have a third car. Uh, we would like to take that to the Clark County Auction, which loves police cars. They do. They do. They do. So we feel we can get more money for that down there. So uh, we would take we would entertain a motion for permission for this board to go forward and sell this last car at auction. Cleared excess that we do no, no longer need it for city purposes and then authorize the city to sell it. You want to put a minimum bid? We can do that later. I mean, we don't have to because it's an auction. Okay. So under state statute, that, that's a viable sell method. So um, typically, City of Austin's used Clark County. It, they sell great down yeah. there. They provide great service. They usually come pick them up, take them down there, and then send a check. So yeah. well, I don't Nothing but great things to say about Clark County. And these are great. These are great cars. I tell you that. Awesome. Okay, Tom makes a permission to sell the last patrol car we have at Clark County auction. Is there a second? I second. Karen Grisha seconds. Question, comments, concerns. Very good. All favor say aye. 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 So moved. Unanimous. Next thing is a quote for letters for the train depot. Miss Baker, would you get a chance for that? That's actually good. Okay. 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 Um, in your packets, you'll see a quote from JNC Printing. They've given us a quote for two different letters. Um, the first one is for eight inch letters that are acrylic with a one inch width and they'll be solid. And those would be $560 and that is to redo where it says Scottsburg on the train depot because we are missing two letters. We can't get those same type of letters and there's some others that are cracked and things, so it's gonna be better for us to replace all of them. If we go with the acrylic, it's $560. They did quote us for an eight inch, three quarter width inch with um, plastic that's hollow. They don't feel that those would hold up as well, um, but they did quote those for us and that would be $300. And it's not per letter, that's the overall for the, the letter. So what we're asking is for you guys to choose which ones you would prefer and um, for approval to for us to go ahead and order them. 500 solid and change, 300 and change for the hollow. Yeah, the, the plastic is 300 even, the acrylic is $560 total. And this is for the total, uh, the full word Scottsburg. Right now it doesn't say Scottsburg, it says Scottsburg. <laughs> and it's got, it, it's getting ready to say Scott and Burke without the S in the middle. <laughs> So what is your pleasure? Well, I, just, I would think we'll, we'll need a report to call back to the right. I think so. We'll talk to you about this. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. so is there a second? I second. Sarah, Karen, second. Questions, comments, concerns? The $500 wins out. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. Next thing is a claims approval. And I have a couple mm -hmm. other things to make up. Uh, we were 
contacted by one of our department heads last week. He's the only one that he filled in for one who retired last year ago. Uh, and at that time, that department head had never had a credit card authorized to him. Um, in this case, the, the department head had to come to Leslie to borrow hers or whatever just because he didn't have one. So I would like to get approval from my office to file paperwork for Chase Harden at the sewer plant to be given a credit card. And I'm going to suggest a $5,000 limit. Okay. Is there is a motion. motion. Chairman okay. Bishop makes the motion to go forward with Chase Harden to receive a credit card as department head of the wastewater treatment plant with a $5,000 limit. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Tom Willis, seconds, questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> is this, and you, do we need to approve your claims as well? Uh, yes, and I've got a couple other sure. ones. This is one specific one because it needs to be paid out of an appropriated fund. I would uh, want to present it to the Board of Works. It's for the Parks Department, and they're requesting to pay $418 out of the Robin Eve Memorial Fund for uh, trees at the park, $418. So I would just like to get approval to pay that out of that non-appropriated fund. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. Karen seconds. Mike, I have a question. How many trees is it? Four. Four trees, $100 a tree. Pardon? $100. Yeah, $104.50. No, I think it was three trees. So go ahead and take a calculate that. Wow. How tall are the trees? <laughs> no, they're they're blooming. They're very pretty. Blue? Yes, they're beautiful. I okay. walked up through there the other day. Yes. Okay, so do we, it's three. Do I we have a motion to, there, that. Okay, we had a motion, so Tom made the motion. Oh wait, we did. So uh, all people say hi, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. So I, now for the blue. uh for the rest, the remainder of the claims, uh, a motion to approve those as presented. Okay. Okay. Melissa makes a motion. I'll second. On the claims, Karen Richard makes a second. Any questions, comments about those claims? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. I have a thing here as well. Chuck and I was with uh, the school board the other day. The school board, and I don't know if I can bring this up, and Josh, if I can't, this is just fodder for the next meeting. But the school board asked that we own a water tower on the Vienna Elementary property in Vienna, Indiana. How, pray tell, do we own a water tower there, you ask? That's a very good question. The way I've researched, what I've researched, it, it appears that at a period of time in yonder years ago, uh, that Underwood had a water department, Vienna had a water department, and Scottsbrook had a water department. They'll all three of those entities combined into the Scottsford Water Utility. Thus, we have a water board. I mean, a lot of places don't have a water board. I guess some do. But anyway, that's how all three could have representation. Today, they still have that tower out there. It is the ownership of Scottsburg, but it's on their property. They no longer want it. We did reach out to see if Thomas Industries would like to have that because they purchased a rock quarry over in Salem, Indiana, to see if they would like to take it down and use it. Mark said no. Well, I, it's not then, supposed to be ours. Is it, sir? She showed. <laughs> then, then the uh, Kent Water Department was contacted, and they said it's a tool for them. They said you're better just to pull one leg out and fall in. <laughs> That's what they said. So, uh, so I guess maybe, and I'm hearing from the clerk prison of the stars. No, I sent an email out to you right at the time that we researched it uh, when you, you and I spoke about that. Okay. And Jessica has done extensive research through the water board. I'll be. We can't find anywhere where the city owns it. I can't that find correct, anything Jessica? where they own it, but I do remember that there, and I'd have to go back and look, and that's what I was just telling Josh. Can't find anything we don't own it. Can't find anything that we don't own it other than where we had vacated our stuff off of the tower. We but I don't know. I can't find anything that we own it, and I can't find anything that we don't own it. I'm going to have to go to the, the only other thing I would know would be to go to the safe and pull some of those minutes from the 60s and 70s. They have Dan Christiani, who has made an offer of $10,000 to take it down. 
to pull the leg out, to disassemble it, and get it out for $10,000. The schools ask us to go in half. So I guess if we don't own it, then we need to have some type of proof that we don't own it. In, the school feels we do own it. In May of 2020, and this is why I said I'd have to go back and research because I just pulled it up on mine. I did send an email that said it is my understanding that the tower does not belong. Tower it that tower is that it does belong to the school and the tower has been vacated for a number of years. So and that was back in 2020. So I'd have to research some more to find out where I pulled that from. You made that statement to the school? No, I made that statement to an inner office email between Carrie, Todd, Jan, myself, and Carmen because we was talking about was the fixed insurance. Fixed assets. Because it's fixed assets. It's not been on our fixed asset list in years. Just because it's not on your fixed asset, does that mean that we don't have ownership council? It should. It should. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, typically with those, um, with the water towers, I was pulling up the school down there the land around them is owned by the owner of the water tower i mean there you can't have situations where that's not the case i can think of for sure but you would have a lease agreement that would be recorded so i mean if there's nothing of that nature then ownership is going to be assumed to be who owns the real estate what well, is that phrase possession is nine tenths of the law <laughs> <laughs> something like that so, so basically, at this point, I think we need to put a hold on this one just to give you a heads up as to future attractions. Okay, so maybe Jessica, you can research it a little bit more. I'll, I'll continue to research more, but yes, when she says that, and I know you and I had talked about it, and that's what I was going off of is what we had here in this. So I will continue to research that. Okay, uh, questions, comments, concerns about anything else? Cracky, look here, we're, we're, we're finished with a few minutes to go. A few minutes to go. Yeah. A few minutes to go. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, anything, have anybody, have anything else? Did you have anything on utilities? Similar adjustments, um, you guys reviewed them if you didn't have any questions. Yeah. Bink had several things, and I told him it was going to be tight, and so we will probably talk about that then in a... Uh, and maybe the next week. Next week. That's it. Because it, it, he had several things on that as well, half a dozen things. He said nothing really. We want to keep us informed of what's going on. So, okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. We adjourn. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for all your help. Thank you. Thank you, folks. The meeting are long.